Hello and welcome to another episode of the Desert Norseman. I guess this is the cutting board series. <laughs> uh, believe me, I make a lot more than just cutting boards, but cutting boards and charcuterie boards is where I'm going with uh, as I'm starting up my business. Uh, the cutting boards themselves are going to be unique. We're going to make three of them out of um, edge grain and three of them end grain. And then charcuterie boards will make six of those as well. But we're starting with uh, a really unique end grain cutting board. I'm hoping it'll turn out. Um, so I had to go uh, to the, the wood store. It took me probably two months in order to find the right plank of natural walnut in order to make this because the patterns you may have seen in my Moxon Vice video, uh, I had an African Baduke one and I had a Purple Heart one as far as cutting boards go. And down the center of the, um, the, the African Paduke one was a diamond pattern and the Purple Heart one was an arrow pattern. They're all unique, um, but it, you, have to surf, you have to search hard for the, the, the walnut, the proper walnut to do it. And what do I mean by that? Well, so in order to make an, a diamond pattern or arrow, arrow pattern for that matter, you have to get that sapwood piece and you have to cut it just right in order to get two pieces that would come together and form something like this. So if you see it like that, imagine the other side is like that, so it'll form a diamond. And that's what we're trying to do with this. In addition to that, I picked up some African wood, but, uh, it's called Wenge. And this wood here is extremely heavy, extremely dense, very, very hard, perfect for cutting boards. Uh, it's got an absolutely beautiful pattern, and the, the patterns on these are, are, are just unbelievable. But we're not going to, we're not going, that would be the face grain. We're not going to go with that. We're going to go with the, the end grain. So it's going to create a cathedral effect where, the, where there's lines that go this way, and there's lines that come up. Now, I don't know how well it's going to show up because Wenge, once you've, once you've coated it, whether it's mineral oil or whatever kind of a sealant or, or something along that you would use, it, it almost turns black, which would be great complementing this. So um, anyway, we're gonna take these, put them in between them. We'll end up gluing them together. And you can see where it already it's forming that, that part of the, one part of a diamond. And we'll end up cutting that into strips and orienting each one in a special way in order to make that diamond pattern. Without further ado, Let's go.
So I did it again. <laughs> I went ahead and cut another cutting board um, into the strips and I forgot to film it. I'm sorry. Um, I promised on the last video that I did that that I would remember this one and I forgot. So evidently I'm getting forgetful in my young age. But I'll go ahead and I'll show you what we've done. I'm putting on gloves because Wenge is also have a, a nickname along with Purple Heart of Splinter or Sliver Wood. You'll get them. This is a very tough wood and anything that protrudes off of it will go in your flesh easily. Anyway, so we've got the arrow pattern, right? That's what we wanted to get. So we want to start at the top and we want to start um, up, down, up, down, oops, down, up. Down, up, down, up, down. All right. So, I don't know how well you can see that. I'll bring the camera in a little bit closer here and we'll get a better look. But hopefully, what you'll be able to see is that we have that diamond pattern that came down. And we also have this unique type of a, a cathedral effect. So, let me get the camera and I'll show you what I'm talking about. So, this is what we've made. And we can see that diamond pattern there. I don't know if I can hold the camera steady. We can see the diamond pattern going down the center. That turned out really nice. That's exactly what I was expecting it to turn out as. You can see these cathedral type effects. I don't know how well they're going to show up once we put the mineral oil on it. Because it's going to turn this nearly black. But this will be the highlight down the center. That'll be gorgeous. Alright, well, let's get on to gluing it. We're on to the next step. We need to flatten it. There's a few different ways of doing it. One would be if you have a, a drum sander. I don't have one. It's too big for my garage. I'd love to have one, maybe someday. The other method would be running it on a, uh, a router table that I built. It just takes some time to set that up. Um, the other way would be through the planer. Um, if it were edge grain or side grain, whichever you prefer, you can run it through the planer, no problem. But when, it, when it's end grain, as we've made here, the fibers are standing up. So whether you're using a router bit, uh, whether you're using a planer, the planer, for instance, the blades are spinning like this. The end grain is standing up. So as the blade comes through, it's prone to hitting the end grain and chipping it out. So that's why we went ahead and we put these, these pieces of cheap pine, just kind of uh, scrap wood, if you will, sacrificial wood. And we put these on there in order to help prevent that. So we're going to run it through the planer. I'm not going to set up the router table, excuse me, the router sled, unless I absolutely have to. So that's the next step. That's what we're going to do now. One thing that was interesting, I saw on Woodworker Source video on YouTube, they, they took this same Wenge and they bleached it. And that's just like this incredible effect. It's beautiful, like zebra stripes. <clears throat> this is from this cutting board. You can see... The bleach where it ran down the other side, I didn't bleach that side. Um, but it'll definitely bleach walnut. It almost took out the whole diamond there. Um, so maybe I'll try that. 
and another cutting board or something, but uh, it would be a really expensive experiment if it didn't work. But um, anyway, let's throw it through the planter, see if we can get this flat. That worked exceptionally well. I'm very happy with it. It's nice and flat. There's no rock. Now we're gonna have to go ahead and trim off the edges, this, this pine. You see some of it started to uh, come off itself because that's a lot of pressure on that blade, <clears throat> those rollers. But we'll cut these off, edge them, and then we're on to sanding. Uh, actually, before sanding, I'm sorry, then we'll, we'll also bevel it. Those will be the next step coming up, and then we can get on to sanding, and we should be able to finish this thing up today. Here's a tip, denatured alcohol, okay, just to fuel denatured alcohol. The interesting thing with this is instead of using the water, like if you wanted to wipe this down, denatured alcohol will dry real quick, probably evaporating real quick here right now in the Arizona aridness. But what it will help you do is it will help you find any kind of wood glue that may, you may have missed when, it, when you were sanded. Uh, it will also, uh, show machine marks. You just apply it, you let it dry, and you take a look at your wood, uh, your project I should say. It doesn't matter if it's the cutting board or anything else. If you apply that on there and you just let it dry, take a look at it, you'll see machine marks or wood glue. Especially if you do like staining, if you're planning on doing a staining project, because stain will not adhere to wood glue. So you definitely would want to use something like this to make sure that you've sanded out all the wood glue that would be visible and then the stain will at least go into, seep into the wood there and stay. So we'll go ahead and apply some of this. It also kind of gives you a sneak peek into what the project's going to look like and how deep and dark, oh goodness. Whoever gets this board is going to be a very happy person. That is going to be just almost black. And the mineral oil gets in there. Mm -hmm. Show you what I'm talking about. You can see that these splotches here, this is wood glue, wood glue. So what that denatured alcohol does is it'll pull that out if you will or I should say just make it more visible there's another little spot right here definitely worth it three twenty four hundred
That is as smooth as glass. Maybe even smoother. So, we'll put some more denatured alcohol on there. That'll all raise the fibers uh, so that like the first time it gets wet. And what that'll do is, once the fibers are raised, we'll do one final sanding with the 400 grit and that'll just make it just so smooth. Let's take a look at this here. All right, three and a half hours of project time, oh, excuse me, three and a half hours of sanding time. I think we're about 10 hours total project time. We still have to put the mineral oil on it, which is the magic. And we have to put the feet on the bottom, but I won't delay anymore. Let's go ahead and make the magic happen. That is dark. Let's flip it over to the back, back side, or the bottom, I should say. All right, we're going to let that soak in and we'll come back to it. You can see it's starting to dry, soaking in, that's end grain. That's just soaking all that mineral oil in real fast. So we might have to do this several times, three, four maybe times, before it finally won't take any more. And then we put the feed on and it is ready. Done. That is a deep chocolate brown, isn't it? It's absolutely beautiful. Uh, Wenge was a pleasure to work with, except for the slivers. Um, but it, it turned out the way I thought. Like, like I was mentioning at the very beginning of the video, you put some kind of coating on it, mineral oil being the coating obviously for a cutting board, and then it's buffed with a wax. A food, everything's food grade. Um, and then it just turns almost black. I mean, it is a deep, deep chocolate brown. Um, so this is my first end grain Wenge cutting board. Uh, so if you're interested um, in purchasing it, you can drop me an email at thedesertnorseman at gmail.com. Uh, I haven't gotten my website up and running yet, but you can email me there, ask me what I'm selling it for, I'll let you know. Um, if you're interested in purchasing it, you'll have my first one. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed it, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe.